Hello everyone, welcome to the Rugby League Lunch Hour with myself James Gordon and Drew Derbyshire. We're sponsored by Betfred here on Love Rugby League. We're live every Thursday 12 till 1 and then the video will be live, uh, available on demand on our Facebook page, YouTube channel and of course through the website. As always, uh, me and Drew are going to talk through the burning issues and thrills and spills of the Rugby League week. We're going to look ahead to the weekend's games uh, and of course we're, we're open to your comments and your questions so if you want us to chat about anything or you want to give your opinion on anything please do say so in the comments. Um, there's a lot to get through this week. Um, I suppose we'll start with the big the big news of the week is Justin Holbrook I suppose. Mm -hmm. um, confirmed, finally confirmed yeah. that he's leaving St Helens and going to Gold Coast Titans at the end of the season. Um, I think pretty much everyone was expecting that to happen. Yeah, I think I think it's pretty much been expected for a couple of weeks now. Obviously, I think he said back in May or something. I asked him about his contract situation at Saints, and back then he was like he was keen to extend his deal. He wanted to stay at Saints because that's obviously at the time when Gold Coast Titans and Canterbury Bulldogs were looking for new head coaches, uh, and he was keen to stay. But then obviously, well, once the interest was there from the Titans and the Bulldogs. Holbrook and his representatives kind of held off that move uh, of signing uh, a new deal with Saints. And I think from that point, as soon as they were interested, I think he was going really because he has NRL aspirations of coaching there. He wants to go back back home uh, in effect. But the main reason he's going is just, just to be a coach in the NRL. Yeah. Obviously, there's only 16 teams in the NRL. Um, it's the elite competition in the world. Uh, it doesn't matter if we're, we like it or not. That is the best competition in the world. Uh, why wouldn't he test himself? And and like he said, he said it a couple of times in interviews. It's it's a weird one because for him to get a job in the NRL, Saints would have had to be flying. Like sit, like you can't be doing an average job or a not a very good job with Saints and get offered an NRL deal because that's just not how it works. He's I know what Saints are still on course for the treble, the flying. Uh, I I don't really think you can fault Justin Albrook for for this kind of uh, move because. Uh, it's it's the highest level, isn't it? Of course, but but it, it is a little bit strange because he is going from the top Super League club at the moment to rock bottom in the NRL, and the Titans are uh, are very much uh, the, the worst team in the NRL at the moment. So it's going to be interesting to see if he can bring that magical touch to the Titans uh, from next year on a two year deal. He's got a, he's got a deep. Oh, obviously, he's got a very good record at Saints. I think his winning rate, his winning percentage is just below eighty percent. Um, but on the flip side, he's only got that one league leader's shield. He's going to get a second one, obviously. Um, does him leaving put more and more pressure now on the, the Challenge Cup final particularly and then also the Grand Final? Because, I mean, in theory, he could go, yeah, not empty-handed, but the league leader's shield, two league leader's shields might be all he goes back with. Yeah, I, I understand what you're saying, to be fair. And it's, it, 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 it's a little bit of a strange one because, obviously, the trophies aren't, aren't won yet, so we don't really know what's... What's going to happen? They are the, the bookies' favourites for the treble, James. But if Saints do win the Challenge Cup and they, and they win the Grand Final and they win the League Leader Shield, they get the treble, then it's kind of job done for Justin yeah. Albrook. I think that's the other he's, issue he's, as well. He's, 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 he would have won at everything that, that yeah, he's actually Yeah, and I think that's the thing, care. isn't it? If he'd have, if he'd have, Whereas, if he'd have said no and won everything, yeah. he's like it's like complete. He's almost like completed the game, but then he's gonna have to play it again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So whereas if he, if he loses the Grand Final or loses the Challenge Cup Final. Uh, and he goes to the Gold Coast Titans, which he's doing for for next year. Then I'll be like, should he stay on another year until he's he's got the full uh, trophy cabinet, so to speak? But, a, but I think I don't know. What, he's, he's a quality coach. He's always been a pleasure to deal with, hasn't he? Uh, I, I suppose the other thing with him is coach for Saints, and he's a he's a great guy to to deal with. I suppose the thing for him, I mean, he's fairly young. Even if he goes to Gold Coast and fails miserably, which we don't expect him to do, his his stock is of. A sufficient standard that he would probably get another job over here if he, if that's what what yeah. happened, wouldn't he? Yeah. So he's it'll, almost in it'll, like it'll, a, it'll, 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 it'll be guaranteed another job in Super League. Yeah, definitely. Um, at, at some point, we've got a, a quick question from James Bridge. I still don't get why the eighteen ninety five Cup Final is later than the Challenge Cup Final. Uh, why not have it at like noon, for example? That way, you'd still get the traditional schoolboy finals before the Challenge Cup Finals. A, a, a it's valid, the BBC, a, yeah, it? A, a very valid question, James. Uh, the 1895 Cup Final, it should be before the Challenge Cup Final in many respects. In my opinion, 
and I know it's tradition, but I think the school's final should be scrapped. Yeah, it, I mean... Just because we've got the 1895 Cup final now, and it, if, you, if you, you are putting this cup competition on for the semi-pro clubs, I think it's got to uh, take place at the right time, so, because because uh, war- a lot of Warrington and Saints, co- uh, uh, Saints coaches yeah. are leaving at 6, o- 6 p.m., yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so they're not even going to going to be in the ground for eighteen ninety five cup final, which was the whole idea of getting them to play it at Wembley, so so you can have a big spectacle. The um, uh, so, so there's the, only, the, there might only be twenty thousand the thinking, inside Wembley. Anyway. So the, the thinking behind it was the RFL obviously wanted to have the eighty ninety five cup game before, um, but it was the BBC we believe that sort of lent back on it. Obviously they'd secured permission off Wembley to have the extra game, um, but BBC were keen to have their traditional build up and have the schools final and have all that. My opinion is is why wouldn't you just have the schools final kicking off earlier? Um, you know, obviously then you'd get people, oh yeah, but you know, if the kids are playing at eleven we'd have to leave at four in the morning and whatever and get there. But yeah, I mean it, it is a little bit of a shame but but hey ho. Um, going back on to St Helens and, and Holbrook then obviously please do keep chipping in with, with your comments as well. Do we think this means that will Holbrook go shopping at St Helens? Will Will we start seeing Gold Coast signing Alex Warren and no. Luke Thompson, Tommy Makinson, well, Johnny it's, Lomax? It's it's very it's a it's a tough one this because none of them players what you just mentioned are off contract at the end of the season. Uh, so if they are going to go to the Gold Coast Titans, then the the Titans will have to stump up a considerable uh, transfer fee for the players. I don't think Saints won't want to sell any of them, so it will be a big price tag what they will have to pay. Um, I think I think Johnny Lomax will be at, at Saints for the rest of his career. Uh, he's twenty eight now. Theo Fires has just signed a new deal. Tommy Makinson's <coughs> deal is up to the end of twenty twenty one, I think. There's, uh, there's an interest. Luke, Luke Thompson's the big one, isn't he? Uh, Luke Luke Thompson's the one who, who's probably going to go to the go to the NRL at some point mm. in his, in the in the next couple of years. Do you, I mean there's a, there's well there's two interesting points of comparison here. There's there's obviously you can compare to Wigan. Who obviously over the past however many years Wigan have lost a number of players to the NRL, but managed to retain a relationship with them whereby when they come back they tend to come back at Wigan, and then Canberra as a NRL comparison, Canberra are having a lot of success, aren't they? Where they've recruited a a large number of English players, and they're seeing a bit of value in that. So is it a case of our Gold Coast w- might Gold Coast look at Canberra and think, well, actually if we can bring in three or four Englishmen. Together, yeah. that may work. And well, the, not... thing is, the thing is about the NRL because the salary cap is so much bigger than Super League. Yeah. Getting getting a marquee player in Super League is is probably just over an average NRL yeah. contract. So it, it doesn't really cost them that much. Like for example, John Bateman at Canberra Raiders will probably be one of the lower earners because because of the salary cap difference. Uh, Ryan Sutton will will certainly be down there uh, in the lower earners. Yet they're still playing full games. So yeah. the Super League competition, and, uh, and they'll be earning a lot more money than they were in Super yeah, League. Yeah, we, we, we always we always have this debate, don't we, when we see a Super League player go to the NRL, particularly an English player who goes to the NRL, uh, and and there's this debate saying, oh, why why can't we keep our players? It's because the salary cap in the yeah. NRL is four times, you, well, three times as big as the Super League competition. Do you think Saint Helens, are tr- well, not, I wouldn't say they're trying so far, but. Are St. Helens going to try to avoid becoming like Wigan where they lose players on a regular basis? So St. Helens have made a few statements this year, aren't they, where they've handed out contracts to players almost as a bit of a, you're not going to the NRL. Is that a good pl- a, a good ploy from St. Helens or are they being a bit naive? You know, because Wigan, you know, ultimately Wigan are the biggest club, if you like, in the UK. The biggest name in rugby, whatever. And yet Wigan are in a place where they know that it's not practical or it's not feasible for them to fight to keep hold of these players. Probably well, because of the reasons you've said is yeah, that they're yeah, competing. We, we so it, it, should St. Yeah, Helens, should St. Uh, Helens almost follow what Wigan have done rather than I think breaking so. the bank to keep? I, yeah, I, I definitely think so. Because I think if you look at Wigan Leeds, St. Helens in particular, they've got the best academies by some distance. They attract all the best young players in the country. Uh, and I think... Saints will have no issue in filling them gaps. So, for example, we're not we're not saying he is, but for example, if Johnny Lomax did go to the NRL, they've got they've got a fantastic young player in Jack Wellsby who could who can easily uh, 
he was easily capable of filling his boots in a couple of years. Uh, they've got the likes of James Bentley, Jack Ashworth, Matty Lees, who can who can fill them roles. I I, I think clubs, uh, club. I think we're gonna are pretty smart not to break the bank in, mm. in terms of keeping players. Uh, we've seen it with uh, Sam Tompkins. We've seen it with Matt, Mickey McAloran leaving the club in recent years. They found a, a, a suitable replacement in Sam Powell for Mickey Mack, who, who probably wouldn't be be on as much money as McAloran was. Uh, at Wigan and what he is now on at Catalan. Th- oh, right, don't get me wrong, but we'd love to see Luke Thompson, Alex Wormsley, uh, Johnny Lomax, all state saints, won't we? Uh, Tommy Makinson. But the reality but is, the reality until, is more, until more money comes in of course, yeah. and the salary cap goes up, that's not possible. But then could you make the argument that if, if, the, if Super League keeps losing these players, it's going to be harder to get that increase because obviously if your best players are always disappearing how are you going to increase the revenue how are you going to increase more money how are you going to increase the salary cap and there was a little talk a bit ago where Super League are talking to um, investment yeah. what's it called capital invest venture capitalists like what rugby union have got potentially that seems to you're going to struggle Super League is going to struggle to increase the salary cap by organic means isn't it mm. it needs it's going to need some sort of big cash injection from somewhere. I see what you're saying though, but on the flip side of the coin, you can say, well, how good would it be to have 30 Englishmen playing in the NRL one day? Mm. How, how good would that be but for, I mean, for I, the sport I, over here? I don't, that, I, don't see it as a ba- I don't see it as a bad thing. I think I think it's more... I suppose it's... Try- I mean, you look at football, don't you? Premier League's biggest league in the world. But La Liga still does all right, even yeah. though it's the second biggest league in the world. Do you know what I mean? And I think maybe... Has, instead of instead of Super League maybe trying to go toe to toe with the NRL, maybe does Super League need to think? Well, we're quite happy being mm. the second best league to the yeah. NRL at the moment, but we're going to keep trying to improve. Yeah. And ultimately, if if the NRL starts signing, like say thirty, if it gets up to thirty Englishmen in the NRL, and all of a sudden, you know, there's going to be there's, there's still because as much if there's thirty Englishmen, there's still thirty decent Australian players that yeah. are being cut out a little bit. So. You know, I, I, I don't understand that, that how people uh, always come up with the arguments about the Super League being as good as the NRL. It'll, it'll <coughs> never be as good as the NRL because the player pool's not there. Yeah. The salary cap in the NRL is three times, maybe nearly four times as big as what it is in Super League. You're always going to get the our best players cherry picked to, to go and yeah. play in that, the NRL competition. You've got, and, and you've got to put yourself in the player's shoes. If, it, if you're a 22 year old lad from Wigan, for example, you always want to go and play. Uh, somewhere in Sydney, aren't you, yeah. on, a, on a big contract and, and live the lifestyle it, because it'd be unbelievable. Um, but I don't, I don't see a problem with with the, the NRL cherry picking the best players, and I, I think it's a, a, a good ploy uh, by Saints initially to to tie up these English players on long deals because then obviously the Aussie clubs have to stump up transfer fees for them. Um, but if if they do eventually sell the likes of Luke Thompson and Alex Walls, that's a fair play to them. Go up to in the NRL because they, they've got two just as good, uh, promising youngsters there in Jack Ashworth and Mr. <coughs> Lee's who can easily fill the void. We'll move on from, from that then, from St. Helens and whatever. There was two. Oh, it's, J- Jason Pilmore also adds uh, you can't do that to the schoolboys' game. Uh, the lads and lasses are the ones that are going to fill the boots of these blokes out there who are about to retire. And I do understand what, what, what Jason's saying, I just think. We can't, we can, we're trying too many different competitions, aren't we, at the moment? Obviously, I, I'd like to see the Women's Challenge Cup for, uh, final being played at Wembley uh, instead of the school, Schools Cup final. Uh, but first and foremost, I think we've got to prioritise 1895 Cup uh, as the second competition to the Challenge Cup at Wembley, and I'd like to see that uh, played beforehand because all the Saints and Warrington coaches are leaving Wembley at 6pm. They're not going to, going to uh, see the, mm. the winner Sheffield game. Uh, they might not. They might not even end up watching the winner Sheffield game because obviously they'll be stuck on a coach back, so they won't even watch the game on on telly bit unless it's they stream it on the phones or, or what have you. So uh, I think the eighteen ninety five company is prioritising. Lewis Banks also says a good point by uh, Saint Helens tying down the the players because the Aussie teams will need to pay a fee. I've just I just said that to be fair um, from their contract rather than just walking away for free. Um. Right, okay, so more news from this week. So, um, two retirements yesterday we saw, well, not yesterday, but announcing that they're going to retire at the end of the season. Uh, ben Westwood, yeah. 500 odd games, um, and 
Mark Minicello as well. Um, both going out at the end of the season. Minicello never played in the grand final. He has, of course, won two Challenge Cups with Hull. Um, is he going to make a grand final, do you think, before he hangs up his boots? That's Ben Westwood. No, Minicello. Oh, Minicello, no. No? no ben Westwood, then? Uh, you think Ben Westwood will? We're going to say it's grand final, so I don't think Westwood will. No, right, okay. Uh, um, yeah, <laughs> that, that was a bit blunt to Ben Westwood and Mark Minicello up there, wasn't it? But I think we're going to make the grand final. I'm not saying they'll win it. Um, I think Saints, Saints are going strong, aren't they, this year? Let's face it. They're they, going they, strong last year. No, no, yeah, but no one would be surprised if Saints won the treble this year, would they? No one would be surprised. No. Um, right, um, today... But, oh, just talk, just on Westwood, though. Go on. What an unbelievable <coughs> career. Far, to, to be a bat rower as well, uh, over 500 career appearances, uh, a career spanning 20 seasons, unbelievable achievement. Yeah, it? I think we had that. At there's, there's three players... Still playing who played in 1999, obviously the last century, and, and Westwood's one of them, Gareth Ellis uh, and Jamie Jones Buchanan, whose birthday is today. And obviously um, Jamie Jones Buchanan's retiring also at the, yeah, the end so, of the year, so, so hopefully, so I, think, I, think, I think Gaz Ellis is going round again though, isn't he, next Well, year? I mean, he's retired already, isn't he, but he's already retired before. He's so. retired before, I'm, but he's, he'll be the only one um, uh, next year. So, right, it's York today, today, obviously we're not that bothered this side of the Pennines, but you have you have put together a, a dream third team, a dream Yorkshire third team. We'd, we'd like to hear people's opinions on this. I'll just run through it quick. So you've got Zach Hardacre at fullback, you've got Jimmy McGilvery, um, you've got Jake Connor, Reese Lynn, who you went for. There was a few, that was one of a debate. Yeah. We were looking at, I, I was, we, I was, we went for Shenton. I was struggling. Uh, yeah, we went struggling for Shenton, and then I had a discussion with James. A rubber James uh, in the office, and, and, he, and, it, and it, it, he was adamant that that Riesling was better than Shenton, Ryan, so I thought Ryan Hall, who's of course we'll the Sydney Roosters, <coughs> uh, Gareth Widderpoo is at Warrington next season, Luke Gale, who's injured out injured, you've got George Burgess, um, he, he's soon to be on the right side of the pen. Yeah, he's uh, off to Wigan. Um, Josh Hodgson, so there's a lot of NRL players in this team. <laughs> Tom <laughs> Burgess, John Bateman. Elliot Whitehead and Sam Burgess. So, I mean, if we were having a Yorkshire versus Lancashire game next week, none of these would be able to play, would they really? I mean, who would you have? You'd have, well, Gale's injured. Well, you can't, you can't, you'd have, you you'd can't have, just imagine the NRL boys out from Yorkshire, James. You'd have, you'd have, uh, you'd have Hardacre, McGilvery, Jake Connor, Rhys Lynn. And uh, yeah, that's it. You, so. could, you could still have a pretty good, pretty good team though, even if you just pick the, the Super League Yorkshire players. You could have Daryl Clark at Ucker. Yeah. Uh, you could have Scott Taylor and Liam Watts front rowers. Back rowers, who could you have? Back rowers. Oh, now you're asking. Flipping it. Um, Ollie Holmes from Cass. Yeah. Brett uh. Ferris. I like Robbie Muller than me. He Robbie Muller, yeah, good yeah. point. Yeah, yeah, good show. I, you know, sure. um, Adam Milner at least. Just keep, keep, I think Lancashire Day is in September, so keep an eye out for that. No, it's not, it was later than that. Oh no, we were looking at Cumbria Day. There'll be a Cumbria Day as well. So yeah, so that was on, on site this week. Um, let's talk a bit about about last weekend. Just, oh, 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 Paul Harrison, uh, we need to stop comparing ourselves to the NRL. We play a totally different style of football. Uh, yes, the NRL has large play pools. It's the national sport. Uh, but Super League is more entertaining. Is it um, a national sport? I don't think I it don't, is. I don't think it is. I think uh, the, only, the only country in the world Papua that's, New Guinea. that's rubber league is a national sport is Papua New Guinea. Uh, we're hoping to go there at the end of the year. We're not, we're not that hopeful though. Um, and it's probably, <laughs> that, that's why Austin is flourishing in Super League. Well, Super League um, is, and I don't think it is more entertaining, to be fair. I don't well, think, I, don't, I mean, I, I think yeah. The, the NRL is good to watch, isn't it? <coughs> the NRL is good to watch. It's, yeah. it's bloody good to watch. The NRL. Um, looking at some other bits and bobs then from from this week, um, let's talk a little bit about Wembley then. So last weekend, Saints Warrington booked the place in the Challenge Cup final, and then also Witness and Sheffield um, won through in the eighteen ninety five Cup. Um, I, I mean, I know I'm biased, but absolutely belting game on it, Witness Lee oh, on wow. Sunday. What a game to watch. That that was a old school game of rugby league. It was chucking it down. 
It looked cool. I, I was tucked up. Uh, it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't cold, but yeah, you were sat there thinking it's bloody July. Yeah. And it feels like we've gone back to winter. It was like it? quite dark as yeah. well. The, the sky was dark, it, but, but uh, the full lights were right. It, it was brilliant. Um, it had a bit of everything. It, 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 it kicked off from kickoff between Mitch Clark and John and Johnston. And uh, I think that, that kind of set the tone for the game, really. Uh, we, obviously, there was a little bit of uh, handbags being thrown earlier on in the season at the, at the Summer Bash while we were tanning ourselves in uh, Barcelona. <laughs> um, but, yeah, if, um, a really enjoyable game at, at Rugby League. I, I loved watching it. And again, I, and and, but the, only, the only criticism of the, of the old league gap, it was the, I think the first half ran to 46 minutes and the second half ran to 85 minutes. Um, because obviously They've not the, the clock They've on not the ball, it's, yeah, it's yeah. not the same as the There wasn't a clock in the stadium either, so no one had a clue how long was left. Hey, that makes it even more exciting. Um, well, yeah. You know, so, it could be the last player, or, or you could just be entering the last 10 minutes. You know, but, but a, a real, a game, I suppose a real um, a real shot in the arm for the 1895 Cup, because you know the celebrations from Witness at the end, and, and the fact that you know there's nearly 5,000 there for the semi-final, you know, a real shot in the arm for the competition, and, yeah. and I'm sure... A few of the other clubs will be looking at Witness, thinking, mm. you know, actually, you know, playing at Wembley, we, you know, maybe we should have had a had a look at that, you know. And uh, um, how many of them that Witness team was academy products? Oh, I mean, it, it'd be at least ten. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, good. But, you know, it's a good effort from. I think Wimbledon, the so. thing is, if the key put, if the, the thing is now, and we were talking about this yesterday, the eight ninety five cup means now that all them clubs, you know, Witness, for instance, could in theory go to Wembley every year now. If, if they get through in the 8 and And I'm sure the likes of Bradford, the likes of Halifax, the likes of Featherstone will be looking at what Witness have done this year and think, you know, actually, we'd quite like, you know, a little day out at, yeah. uh, at Wembley. Um, yeah. You know, because ultimately, for for the majority of these clubs, it's many, many years since they last went. I mean, Sheffield were, were there um, yeah. 98, 21 years ago. Um, Witness were there 93. But... You know, couple of generations of fans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Not been but, but and then I think they're the most recent ones. I mean, if you look, none of the other club apart from Bradford, obviously, um, in, in recent times, have, have, have actually have actually been so. Um, great competition. That move on from that. We'll look at the Great Britain tour briefly because I want to have a chat about this. The tickets have gone on sale for the Great Britain tour uh, in New Zealand and Papua New Guinea later this year. Um, but I just wanted to raise about the Oceania. Yeah. yeah, Oceania Cup. I've been getting grief for this this week. All senior. Oh, so, so for those of you who didn't know, there's, 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 there's a load of there's a load of uh, games going on. Uh, probably the best international program that there's been for for many years. Um, Australia play New Zealand and Tonga in the Oceania Cup, and then Samoa, Fiji, and Papua New Guinea play in the Oceania Shield. Whoever wins the Oceania Shield will play in the Oceania Cup next year because Australia are obviously coming on tour over here and then your mates at the Cook Islands are going to come in to to the Oceania Shield so it's good to see finally I suppose it looks like there's a real structure yeah, there's a real structure <laughs> I, I, I can't wait. Uh, hopefully we can we can watch all Spot, the games. We are open to sponsorship but, to go. But um, none of the get like we don't know what any of the. <coughs> any yeah, I mean, the, I mean, they, they're still major. They're still major issues. The broadcast deals. Yeah, yeah, we, still, don't, we don't know what how to watch and where to there's, watch. There's still major issues with the international game in terms of we never know the calendar dead far in advance. We might get six months notice, and then you never know whether it's going to be on TV or not. And you know, you'd like to think that someone sort you know what's Nigel Wood doing? You know, he's had. Ten year, well, he's had what eight years, seven or eight years since the uh, six, seven years since the World Cup. You know the legacy of the last World Cup of that twenty thirteen World Cup was meant to be we have this international calendar, and yet here we are still here, still drawing up international calendars on the back of a fag packet. They should be announced a year, two years in advance. They should have broadcasters because you look at other sports like football, rugby union. They know, you know, who England are playing now in football for like the next yeah. two years. And it's just yeah. like, you know, oh. how do you expect to grow it? So, um, you know, we still don't know Australia. But, you know, there's a bit of uncertainty. We sort of think Australia are coming now next year, but we still haven't got a clue who they're playing. Are they playing England? Are they playing Great Britain? Are they playing your Yorkshire Dream 13? You know, we just don't know. Yeah, I know. Um, it's, it is frustrating, but it does look promising. Yeah, uh, I, I, <coughs> I just can't wait that... Oh, the, the Great Britain shirt's been released, the Great Britain merchandise has been released, that's getting everyone excited. Uh, a, a kind of a, a good thing in many ways, um, it's, so, it's already out of stock, the England Great Britain line shirt. 
Um, Have you bought mine? Which is, which is brilliant. I can't afford to buy any. I don't get paid enough. Oh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, but the international calendar is great. I'm, I'm even looking forward to, to watching the Oceania Cup yeah. because some of them Pacific uh, players are absolutely massive. Uh, so there'll be some big, speaking, uh, big contacts in that. Speaking of a Pacific player, Samoan Patrick Arvan. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you've seen this on Twitter, a pretty gory uh, picture that Patrick Garvan tweeted. We'll have to get a screen, shouldn't we? We should get a screen. We could get tweets up and all sorts. Um, but we, need, sky, yeah, we, need, we need sponsorship for that as well. Um, Patrick Garvan suffered a nasty looking gash cut, whatever you want to call it, to his ankle. Um, and I think a few witness fans set up a crowd fund for him and he basically said that he doesn't want the money, he wants it to go to the club. Patrick Garvan has been playing for Widnes for free on a four week trial basis, which has now, I believe, come to an end. Um, Widnes unable to sign players uh, due to being in special measures. Another championship club in special measures, we believe, are Bradford. Um, yeah. They've been prevented from making a few signings this week. Um, you know, a bit of drama going on there as well. Um, oh, there are, there, there's always drama in the surrounding Bradford. <coughs> it just seems like. Uh... Well, Chalmers has come out today and basically said. There's a two-week deadline to decide whether they're going to play at Odsall next season. Is that, to me, it just strikes as posturing from him to get a better deal out of the RFL, mm. I think. That's, uh, I don't, I don't they're think, kind of threatening to play games at Bradford Park Avenue, but uh, wasn't that all the old two Yeah, games? Bradford Park Avenue is not good enough for him to play, unless, unless they're going to get some temporary stands in or something. Um, the, the, well, the, there was talk in the paper today about um, the playing at Dewsbury. Wow. Which... You know, you're just like... The home of the Jubilee <laughs> um. Yeah, which, um, yeah, I mean, that would just be catastrophic for Bradford, really. Um, I, I just think it's a bit of posturing, but, but one to keep an eye out, out on. Yeah, uh, certainly. Um, Bradford, Jubilee merger? Oh, God. Oh. Bradford, Rams. To be fair, I think, I think Brad, in hindsight, Bradford should Well, they're playing the same colours. They won't have to change the changing rooms. <laughs> In, in, I think in hindsight Bradford should have dropped Bradford Bulls and started again as Bradford Rams or whatever you want to call them oh. just because oh, I think oh. it's caused them too many issues hasn't it they've not been able to draw a line they should have started in League One they should have started afresh anyway shout um, out to Jewsbury media manager Stephen Downs get, get on the Jewsbury Rams Twitter he puts out some brilliant videos honestly yeah, that, one, that out, was a cracker last week Martin Riley last yeah, week last week that was unbelievable that was um some transfer news. Newcastle have signed Quentin Lalu Togaga, QLT to me and you. Um, I prefer a BLT myself. He's play, I think Simon Finnegan's, hin, hin, Simon Finnegan's hinted that he's going to play standoff, I think. Mm. Um, Newcastle, we were talking about this, Newcastle need to get promoted this year, don't they? Well, obviously, Mikey Lewis, who was, who, who was written up at, in Newcastle in recent weeks, he's been recalled by Hulk R. Uh, the halfback, so obviously they've been searching for a halfback spot. QLT fits the bill perfectly. He's 34 now, um, maybe got a season or two left in him. Uh, I, I think he's a solid signing. Uh, I, I think it'd be a catastrophe if, if Thunder don't get promoted to the championship, considering the, the, the budget they have compared to the, the League One rivals. Uh, solid signing for, for Newcastle, though. QLT, I'm a big fan of him. Wakefield. Of, well, or Chris Chester sort of hinted that they want to make one or two signs. Have we got anything? Do we know who any of them might be? They've released Ma- Mason Kate and Brown. Yeah, they have. Uh, they've got plenty of cap space available. Obviously, they've been linked with Brett Ferris from Leeds for, for next year, um, which I think will be quite interesting. He, he obviously had a spell at Wakefield earlier on. Well, he's played for all, hasn't he, Ferris? He's played yeah, for all. He's he, played he, is a, he is a Yorkshireman. He's played for Bradford. He Yorkshire. should be in the Yorkshire Dream 13. <laughs> Brad, he's played for Bradford, Huddersfield, Castleford, Wakefield, Leeds. Yeah. Yeah. He's been um, every full time Yorkshire team. He's been yeah. everywhere. Um, Kate and Brown, is if, do, you, do you find that a, an interesting one? Is there an issue with Kate and Brown? I mean, obviously, Toronto signed him and he, he didn't quite work out from there. He had I, a bit I, of spot at Sol. I've got a clue on that. Is it, is, I think, is he a personal trainer or something like that in, 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 outside of rugby league or, or something along? The fitness lines, um, so he, he might just he might just want to do his personal training full time. He might just uh, to Wakefield. Obviously, he was only on a deal until the end of the season. 
he might not like the uncertainty because he's only ever been on short term deals. So well, he might yeah, not like was the he was he one of the players that Bradford were looking at potentially? Because Bradford have said that they had a couple lined up. Possibly. <coughs> um, <but coughs> obviously, it, uh, with the way Wakefield put it out, it seemed like he won't be joining uh, another club anytime soon. Um, so I, I think he'll have a, a little bit of time out in the game. I don't know how old he is, but he, he might just come back to uh, come back in 2020 and 2021 or something like that. Um, because he's got Jamaican heritage and couple of the reggae warriors in the 2021 <laughs> World Cup. Um, let's look at then. Well, well, let's have a look at. We'll look at to the weekend. We'll look at the games. But should we? Should we do relegation first? Should we do our relegation predictions first? Should we do that. We'll do that first. Go on. Go on. Right, so if you go on the site, we've got the Super League relegation. We're going to get a lot of stick for this, aren't we? Well, you are. Oh. Super League relegation running article on the website, which lists the six, the bottom five. We've, 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 we think Salford is safe, so we've discounted them. So we've gone Huddersfield, Wakefield, Leeds, OK, London. Their six remaining games each is available in an article, Super League running. Um, and then we've just put on, just before we went live, Super League relegation predictors. So me and Drew, every week, we're going to predict the games involving the relegation teams. Um, and then we're going to basically track what the league table looks like. So... Um, let's run through them. We've got the four games that Im- are implicated in the relegation battle this week, and, and please do comment and, and give us abuse as you as you agree or disagree with us. Huddersfield versus Leeds Friday, big game. Two of the teams involved in this bottom five. Um, I've gone Huddersfield. You've gone Leeds. I just think, <coughs> as it currently stands, Leeds have got a little bit more to play for than Huddersfield. And I just you think. Well, yeah, because I think Leeds are lower down, aren't they? I, so uh, I just think Leeds have that little bit more fight and spirit in them than I think, I think, will at this stage. I, think I, I agree with your point in terms of I think it's more important for Leeds to win this game yeah. than Huddersfield. I think if Huddersfield win this game, I think they're almost they're almost putting their head above the parapet. I think they're, they're almost thinking, if we win this game, we're not far off from being safe. We were talking a few weeks ago that 20 points yeah. would be enough. I still think I'd be very surprised. Well, you look at it and you think, actually, 20 points isn't... You could see someone going down on 20 points now, couldn't you? Um, which is unbelievable when you think about it. Um, but no, I think Huddersfield, we'll I just think... I think I think at home as well, I think Huddersfield have got a bit of something. It's always interesting, this, this situation with uh, Sebastian Ikehee for uh, Huddersfield, because he's in, dream he's team, in the Dream he? Team in 2017, a fantastic season, one of the higher earners at the Giants, and uh, he's, he's just not getting is, is, is that been the problem? Did they offer him too much money and then they were trying to sort of Possibly. get rid of him and, and obviously he's just sat tight but, on his contract? But it, he's, he's still obviously on contract with Huddersfield, he's, he's still available to play and he's just not getting in the team at the, at the moment. He's, and young players, all furthest of them, are getting, getting over it. But. Huddersfield have been linked with Aidan Caesar. Yeah. Um, it would, I presume that'll be for next season anyway. Um, we're trying to get more for this season. Well, it could be for this season. No, but he's he's kept, he's been in in and out of the Raiders team uh, a lot this this season. Been limited to appearances, and obviously Canberra are getting George Williams from Wigan on a three year deal for twenty twenty. So the <laughs> Caesar of Turkey International um, doesn't look to be featuring in the plans of Canberra. So yeah, I, I think it, it'd be a good good sign for Super League. It's, He's a much more accomplished player than what Matt Frawley is. Matt Frawley, I think he had 20, 25 mm. NRL games. He was a bit like Jack Little John, wasn't he, in the scene before? Yeah. But it, um, he's, a, he's, a, he's been a flop, hasn't he, Frawley? Yeah, you know, he's, he's a good example, I think, of a player that is in the team because he's Australian. Yeah, 100%. Uh, what, what, they've got yeah, Ollie Russell, though. Ollie Russell, yeah. Who's a great young British and, and, and if you look at the game when they absolutely destroyed Hull at Magic Weekend, Russell and Gaskell were the highs. Yeah. Why wouldn't you just stick with that pair? Um, <coughs> Tom Holmes has been doing pretty well as well in recent yeah, yeah. But now, Ollie, Ollie Russell's... There, there you go, we're on about English, British halves. Ollie Russell's replaced Tom Holmes in the Huddersfield's 19-man squad for the, for the Leeds game, but for all he's in. Leeds, um, Leeds had sort of breathed a bit of life into their survival, haven't they? They'd won back-to-back games... Mm. Um, and then suffered that big loss, really, to, to Hull KR, which has, has sort of sucked them back in. Well, not sucked them back into it, because they were never out of it, but they'll have been stewing over that result for the last couple of weeks now. 
Mm. That probably came at a wrong time for him. Because if if you'd have gone into the break on the back of two wins, you'd have been, yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, so it's interesting how they react to that. It's going to be interesting for all the teams yes. to see how this break has affected them. Mm. Because I think, I think Chris Chester gave Wakefield five or six days off, which is a pr- pretty happy time mid-season. Mm-hmm. Uh, for a break, so it's going to be interesting to see how, how this. Well, it break, could go. It could go one or two ways. It, yeah, I mean, Wakefield have got the toughest of games. They play Saint Helens away. Um, we've not. We're not going to win there. We, are they? We've not give, We've actually gone by Saint Helens by eighteen, both yeah. the same. Um, but it could. It could invariably be a lot more than that. Um, it, it could go. It could go one or two ways, isn't it? Because obviously Justin Albrook, the the news has uh, mm-hmm. been announced this week about him going to Gold Coast. So it could. It could kind of galvanise the team and bring them together, or it could distract them a little bit, and it could uh, be up for a, a tough test against Wakefield. But I just think they, they're just too powerful, especially the, at all. The big thing actually for for Wakefield that they need to consider is the points difference, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Because you know it's all right saying okay, we might get, we're probably going to get beat by Saint Helens, but damage limitation, isn't it? Because at, at the moment Wakefield's Wakefield's points difference is marginally worse than Leeds. They're five points worse than Leeds, but. They're, they're a good 80, better than Hull KR, um, uh, and over 100 better than London. If they are pumped by 60 at St. Helens, all of a sudden they lose that little bit of an advantage they've got over Hull KR and London, don't they? Yeah. Um, so yeah. that's quite critical. Um, Hull KR, Castleford. I've gone Hull KR because I think they've done what Hull KR have been doing okay at home under Tony Smith. Um, I just think, I think Castleford... Are, do you yeah. think Castleford is starting to hit a bit of form? Yeah, I think Castleford have come good at the right time, uh, and I think they'll hit the the playoffs with a little bit of form. I just think the the, the likes to throw the ball around. I, I just think they're, they're too skillful for for whole KR at this time. And um, the final game involving the relegation teams is London against Salford. Um, I mean, in some ways, you could call both of these teams hard to predict because it feels like you predict, you predict Salford to lose and they win. You predict them to win and they lose, and, and London are a bit like that as well. Um, I, I've got a habit of backing London at home. I think I've backed them most games at home this season, so I've backed them this week by two. You've gone London by one. Um, Jordan, I'd go drop goal. Is that what you're going for? So, based on those predictions, I, I my predictions would see Leeds bottom of the league after this weekend on 16. It'd have Wakefield, Hull KR and London on 18 and Huddersfield on 20. Your predictions would have Hull KR bottom of the league on 16, London, Wakefield and then if all the other four on 18. If your predictions come in, it's tight as a nuns. Right? So, um, Hull, the other, the other two games, Hull, Wigan, Hull, Wigan, Hull Wigan, uh, I've gone Wigan by seven, I think. Um, and then the other game is, of course, Catalan Warrington. If you've not seen the French roundup every Monday on Love Rugby League, what's in it this week, James? Warrington have been hit by travellers. Travellers? Travellers. So you might have seen it when Wakefield played Catalan the other week. Uh, they used um, Palau's stadium um, as a training sort of ground and uh, it's been taken over by travellers. Well, Warrington have gone over early, haven't they? They've they flown yeah, they over today. Oh, they've gone today? Yeah. I thought they've gone a bit early. Which is um, pretty early, really, because a lot of teams tend to just go there and back in the day now and, mm. and be on within 22 hours or something like that. Um, but Warrington are, are taking it easy. Obviously, they had a tough semi-final <coughs> last weekend. Yeah. So, um, I mean, you know, we talk about relegation and we'll go in We'll go into a bit more depth about relegation again, but looking at the Super League table, we are talking about relegation, but there's a massive battle for that for the playoffs, isn't there now? Um, you've got Wigan and Cass and Catalan all on 24 and Salford on 22. Um, any slip up is going to cost you, isn't it? Really, mm. um, Wigan will probably look at tonight's game as an opportunity because if Wigan win tonight, they can move within two points of Hull. Um, I think, I think if, if Wigan lose at Hull tonight, I don't think. They get in third place, are they? No, not at all. Not at all. I, if you know, we're going to lose tonight. Yeah, but I, think, I, think tonight if, I think if Hull win tonight, I think Hull have got third box. Up. Yeah. Um, Hull will be looking at Warrington thinking, well, Catalan could turn Warrington over, and if Hull win tonight, they'll level one point for Warrington. Um, so, yeah, lots to look at in that top five. But Salford will look at this weekend and think, well, you know, if, if, if we can pick up a win this week. You know, if, if, if Wigan lose or if Catalan lose, you know, we'll be moving on points to them. So there's going to be, it's effectively 
you know, four teams going into two, maybe three spots. It, 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 well, it's either four into two or five into three, isn't it? So, um, not forgetting that. But let's go back on to the relegation. So, if you go on to, um, like I said, we've got a Super League running piece which lists the six fixtures of all the teams. I just wanted to... We've done our predictions for this week, but I want to know who you think is going to go down. I think you. I think you've got to go with London, haven't you? Is that is that I what you're going? I don't. With? Know, I don't know because Wakefield have got it so tough. Yeah, so Wakefield. let's have, let's have a look at the game. So so in my you know in my opinion, it's all in London's hands. London's last three games. Ah, Leeds at home, Hull Car away, and Wakefield away. So ultimately, London have got uh, they've got the chips, haven't they? They, yeah. they, they, it's up to them what happens. Um, Wakefield, as you say, have got a pretty tough going. They've got Saints away, Warrington. Away. They've got Saints away, Hull at home, Hull Car away, Wigan at home, Warrington away, and then London at home. So Wakefield. The thing is with Wakefield though is as much as it's tough, they do play Hull Car and London. And, and ultimately, if they win them two games, it doesn't really matter what they do in the other games. So if you're Chris Chester, do you, do you go all out and think, right, OK, we're going to give it a go at Saints and Hull against Wigan and that, but the Hull KR and London games, we have to win those games. But, but do you think, because it, they're not like a, a fresh weight field side, are they? They're, they're doing it tough with injuries. Uh, last Thursday, when they returned to the training, they only had 17 available first team players. So that's that's a, a full squad. So we can't drop anyone if they play a poor. It's just got to be that team. Dave, Dave Fafita is playing through the pain bar barrier. He needs surgery. It's it's so tough. I, I, I honestly believe it's out to Wakefield and, and London who go down. I, I'd, I'll say <laughs> I'll say London. Because um, I, I mean, my, I think because I think this is one of the issues that. Um, but it's so it's so tight. I think this is one of the issues that Hull KR have had a little bit. Well, not not. I mean, Hull KR beat Warrington, didn't they? Mm. And then lost to London. And I think that's I think that's it, who you beat is crucial. I think you know it's like if Wakefield beat Hull FC, but then the week after they lose to Hull KR, they're actually worse off. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And I think that's that. But then at the same time. If you target certain games, are you putting even more pressure on yourself? Um, so yeah, so we think Wakefield have got the toughest run in. Huddersfield, after tomorrow night when they play Leeds, um, they don't play any of the other um, bottom five teams. They play Salford away, Casper at home, Hull away, St. Helens away and Catalan at home. I, I, I think Huddersfield have got enough in them to, to stay up. I, 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 think they'll, I, yeah. I think they'll pick up a result. Even if it's Casper at home, I think they'll pick up a result somewhere. Yeah, I think, I think what it's that'll like see up there. Leeds, <coughs> Leeds are benefiting from their stadium redevelopment because Leeds have got four home games in the last six, which might be crucial for them. Yeah, although yeah, having, of course. Although having said, but, said that, they lost to Okara at home in their last game. But only by two points in Okara. Um, all all left see a third, aren't they? Um, H H Huddersfield, Catalan, St. Helens. No, but they lost to Okara as well. Did they? Yeah, they lost to Okara on, on TV. Did they? Yeah, when Wigan played Saints oh, the week before. Oh, of course, yeah. Of course. Uh, I, was, I, was so, at, I was at Wigan Saints so again Le that should have been on TV. Le Leeds, uh, Leeds is running it. Huddersfield away, Catalan's at home, St. Helens at home, London away, Salford at home, Warrington at home. Um, so the four, I mean, I mean again, when you look at Leeds, Leeds play Huddersfield away and London away, ultimately, if they lose both of them games, they're in a bit of you know they're in a bit of trouble. But then if they win both of them games, you, you fancy them to, to stay up. Uh, Hull KR have Casper at home, Wigan away, Wakefield at home, Catalan away, London at home, Salford away. I think Hull KR, they look at they've got Casper and Wakefield and London at home. I think yeah. I, I I think Hull KR will be okay. Yeah, I do. Uh, I, mean, I think it, genuinely it's out of Leeds and Wakefield. Uh, uh, London London Wakefield. Um, so, so obviously we mentioned London's last three games, but before that they've got Salford at home this weekend, and then they have Casford away, Catalan away. Um, an interesting footnote or side note, whatever you want to call it. Leeds play St Helens the week before Wembley. Um, St Helens caused a bit of a stink, didn't they, when they played a weakened team against London? It'll be interesting to see whether they do the same against Leeds. Um, I'm sure there'll be a lot of happy old KR fans out there if they do or not. Is it, <coughs> well. It's kind of different, isn't it, now, for Saints? I know they rested them the week before the Challenge uh, Cup semi-finals against Halifax. 
but do you not want to go into Wembley with a little bit of form as well? I mean, the other thing is, is we, it, the start. other thing is it's on the Thursday, so yeah. it's Thursday to Saturday. It's not like it's Sunday to Saturday, or do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens there. Um, so, as we do in the final quarter of the show, let's look ahead at the weekend's game. So, obviously, we've gone through the Super League game, so let's go through Championship. Um, Friday night, we've got a dress rehearsal for the uh, 1895 Cup final as, as Sheffield take on witness in the slightly less glamorous surroundings of the Olympic Legacy Park. Are you going? Um, I'm going. I, I have spoken to... Is to Lucy going? Lucy's not going. Oh, but she's going to Wembley. Uh, I'm not actually being asked to go. Abs- absolutely uh, typical. Um, <laughs> the, um, <laughs> what was I going to say? Uh, so, th- a few people have asked me about this and I have asked a few people at Sheffield. Apparently, this, the Olympic Legacy Park's worse this year than it was last year because they had three t- stands last year that were taken down so that work could commence on the permanent stadium and, mm-hmm. and, and not one sod has been turned, is what someone described it to me as. Um, so, yeah, it doesn't look it didn't look great on the R League app last week. Wow. Um, I, I asked, is it going to happen? They seem... Sheffield United have obviously got the, yeah. the tender or whatever you want to call it for it. They have it, 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 the women won't play. Yeah, they women see it play. Obviously, Sheffield Eagles went for it and were outbid or, or whatever. Um, it, it doesn't strike me as a ground where Championship Rugby League should be played, but be interesting to see what that's like. Um, other Championship games this weekend are all on Sunday. Um, we've got Barrow York, Bradford, Toronto. So, who are you, go- are you going? Who are you going for? Who? Sheffield Witness? Witness. I'll go for Witness. Um, Barrow York, I'm going York. I'll go York. We'll, we'll look at the implications of the table in a minute. Bradford, Toronto. Toronto, Toronto it's got to be on. Dewsbury, Featherston. 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 Halifax, Toulouse. 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 There's four, that's five away wins out of five so far here. Yeah. Lee versus Swinton. Lee, home win. Rock, and Swinton, though, are unbeaten. Yeah, they are. Four, they I think. We've got quite a few Lee lads in, this, in the team. Well. Rochdale, Batley. Badly, so apart from uh, Swinton, we're going uh, away wins across the board. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's have a look Ro- at the... Rochdale will be relegated as well this weekend. Yes, yeah, so I was just going to check that. So let's have a look at the championship table. Um, yeah, Rochdale, uh, what do they play? 27. Rochdale, yeah. If Rochdale don't win this weekend, they're down. They're, they're pretty much down anyway because the 10 points behind Widness and their points difference is 600. It is nearly 700 worse. Well, more than 700 worse. Nearly 800 well, worse. Well. So... Unless Rochdale, well, I mean, I don't even, I wouldn't even like to contemplate what they'd have to do to stay up. But um, above Rochdale is Barrow on nine. Things looking pretty bleak for Barrow as well. They, they need to win probably, I'd say probably four of their last five games. Maybe three would be enough. Barrow have got nine. Witness have got twelve. Um, Batley have got thirteen. Jews have got fourteen. Swinton after their unbeaten run of late are up on seventeen, getting a nosebleed. They're only two points behind Halifax. Um, Looking at the top five, Toronto, of course, have guaranteed first place there on 42. There's still a battle for second and third, which is actually quite important, isn't it, to finish second or third. Um, you've got York on 31, Toulouse on 30, Lee on 30, uh, and then Featherston just behind on 28. Bradford are clinging on there on 25, uh, and then Sheffield on 24. Sheffield probably got too much to do, you'd think, to make that top five now, but Bradford can't afford to lose many more. Um, Playoffs, it's been confirmed that the game will always be played at the highest ranked team. So we talked about this last week. If Toulouse were to so at the moment it's the top three is Toronto York Toulouse. If Toulouse were to win at York, um, and then they played York later on, they'd still have to play at York, which is ridiculous. Um but hey ho. Um they, they need to sort the system at all. No, it, it's just system. ridiculous because it's ne- it's never been a problem in the past. So why has it become a problem this year? Why have they had to muck it around? But that's a that's a, a debate for a different day. Um let's have a look at the League One fixtures and we'll have a look at the League One table as well. Um there are there's a, there's a few League One games on Saturday. London Scholars play Oldham, who have this morning announced the signing of former York captain Ed Smith. Your mates West Wales. I, I reckon. Oh God. Hold them for that. Hold them, yeah. Hold your them mates. Your mates at West Wales, fresh from their first ever win. Historic um, win. They're at home to Newcastle Thunder. <laughs> I don't. Um, I don't think they'll be continuing that winning. Think they'll be uh, Newcastle winning Thunder. I'm not sure whether like QLT will go straight into that game. Yeah, um, I think Newcastle for that one. Coventry against Ke- on Sunday. Sorry, Coventry against Keithley. Hunslet against Keithley. North Wales. And then we've got a Cumbrian derby, Whitehaven 
against Workington. I'll go with Whitehaven, they're going well out. So let, let's have a look at the league one. So Whitehaven, of course, top of the tree on 25. Um, they've played a game more than Newcastle, who are on 21. They've also played a game more than Oldham, who are on 20. So it's one of them three, you think, for winning the league. Um, Doncaster and Hunslet are just behind on 18. Workington have got 16. London Scholars have dropped off a little bit there on 15. Um, North Wales are on 12. They've got a game in hand as well. Um, it's, what is it, the top one, and is it the next five playoffs? So, yep. down to six. So, I mean, London, I mean, North Wales will still fancy the chances of sneaking into that playoffs if they can get a bit of a run. Um, they play 20 games in total, so some teams have got four left, some have got five. Um, playoffs is probably beyond West Wales at this point. Um, I think Keithley as well, of course, Keithley had that points deduction. Um, who do we think? Do you think Newcastle will come good? Have they got too much to do? I mean, New, Newcastle will get promotion. Do you think? Yeah. Automatics, do you think Newcastle finished top? Uh, how far are they off? Well, the four behind, but with a game in hand. So yeah, two, uh, and depending on who the game in hand against, yeah. two behind. Uh, it's going to be close, but it's, it's going to be close. I mean, New White, Newcastle will get a promotion. Of course, Whitehaven had a Whitehaven were involved in a thrilling um, battle last year with mm. with Bradford uh, and and York, um, and, and Whitehaven lost the grand final the year before as well, didn't they? I think they got beat. Um, I'm trying to think who they, who they got beat by now, but. Um, Whitehaven definitely went all the way and lost in Golden Point extra time um, in, in the player semi-finals, I think, something the year before that. Um, what time are we? We've still got another five minutes, so if uh, in honour of our mate Dave Parkinson, who's not here again, we'll, uh, let's run through some of the other fixtures going on this weekend. In the National Conference League, um, in the Premier League, Hunstead Club Parkside against Underbank Rangers, Kells against Lee Miners, Siddle against Everton Rangers, Thatterweath against Rochdale Mayfield, Wathbrow against Lock Lane and West Hull against Thornhill Trojans. In Division 1, there's Dewsbury Moore against Martin Warriors, Featherstone Lions against Stanley, Milford against Pilkington Rex, Hilton Raiders against Normanton, Wigan St. Pats against Skirlock, York Acorn against Saddleworth. Uh, in Division 2, it's Barrow Island against Intros Bridge. Go on, Bridge. Sponsored by our mate Steve upstairs as well. Yeah, Telecom uh, Solutions. Bradford Dudley Hill against Askham. We're Clock. trying to get it sponsored GB Tour. Yeah, Clockface yeah. Miners against West Bowling, Crossfields against Beverly, East Leeds against Shaw Cross Sharks, and Wigan St. Jude's against Hull Dockers. Go on, and then on Sunday, even more rugby league, it's Women's Super League Sunday. Casper Bradford, Featherstone Wigan, Leeds York, St. Helens Wakefield. In women's Super League, do they do they carry the women's Super League table on the? No, uh, I don't think they do. On BBC, do they not? Oh well, we, we can't tell you who's who, who's where anyway. But I think um, Ka- Castle for the top because they, they only suffered the first defeat in the Challenge Cup final against Leeds last week. We um well we've got a few minutes left, so we 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 obviously were there for the Challenge Cup women's Challenge Cup final last week in Bolton. Um, <laughs> it was announced that there was four thousand in the ground when the game finished. How accurate that figure is, I'm not sure. There definitely wasn't 4,000 in the ground while it was on. Um, but a decent following from Castleford. Yeah, Ca- uh, Ca- Castleford brought a decent number, didn't they? They pro- yeah. probably brought about half of what Halifax brought. Yeah. In all honesty. Yeah, yeah. Um, they Just brought the way, a yeah. very good following. Uh, I enjoyed the game, to be fair. I thought it, it, it was a, an entertaining game to watch. Uh, I like watching Georgia Roach for Castleford. You can, you can easily tell why she won. The inaugural uh, Woman of Steel Award in 2018. I think she's just like head and shoulders above uh, above everyone else. I think she'll be the first English women's player to go and play in the women's comp over in Australia, which is kind of semi-professional now, and they're getting paid for it over in Australia. Um, Courtney Hill, the Australian uh, match ex-cricketer. winner, ex-cricketer, ex-cricketer um, f- for Leeds, the match winner. Uh, she she had a, a very fine game. Uh, she uh, orchestrated things very, very, very well for the Rhinos and did like a, I think it was a sixty and seventy meter uh, dart for the for for the match winning try. <coughs> um, a couple of other players, Caitlin Beaver as well. What a player she's going to be for for the Leeds Rhinos at fullback. Uh, every time the ball went out, um, and she had a twenty meter restart. She was she was light lightning. Honestly, I'm, I I don't I don't I'm I'm not seeing many players as quick as her. Uh, and as soon as she had the quick quick uh, tap on the twenty, she was gone. She was she made it at least past the thirty every single time, maybe to the forty. My my uh, a very good player. It, it, you know, it was a decent game. My you know I, I don't I don't profess to be an expert in in women's super league or women's rugby league. Um, 
My only slight concern with the women's game at the moment is I, do, I feel like the game needs to make sure it doesn't get too carried away and, and make it go too fast. Because I think you've got you've, you've got some good teams, haven't you? You've got Leeds, Casford, St. Helens, a good teams, but you just got to be careful that you don't dilute the quality of the good teams by making too many other teams, if that makes sense. Because I think I think there's probably players that are spread about in a few different clubs now that if they came together and played in one in one club, it'd be do a, not a think, lot stronger. Do you not think we should have a women's super league? So like every there is a women's super well, league. Well, let me explain. Like a franchise. Let me explain. Type. So all, all, all the teams in the men's Super League have a women's team. Uh, see, but that's the thing. I think that's where the problem is because I think you're trying to force it too much then. If the players aren't there, they're not there. And I think the reason why Castleford and Leeds are, and, and St. Helens is obviously built off Fat Weef, isn't it? The reason why they're strong is because they've got the they've had the women's infrastructure there. I think... Yeah, but in all, in, in all maybe, teams, think, in, the, in the men's league, you know, one out of four teams is going to win the grand final. No, I, under, no, I understand right, that. Yeah, I, I, no, I understand that. But I think... There's, there's certainly a, a there's a much bigger gulf between the better women's teams and the weak because like look Wakefield for instance Wakefield fair play to them they're trying to develop and you've got to start somewhere I completely get that but you know lobbing you know and getting new players playing do you want them playing against the elite players because because ultimately the elite the elite players rightly want to get paid they want to get to a point where they're getting paid yeah. to play and I think if you dilute the elite competition by having players who are just playing, which is great, don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with just playing, it, it has there got to be that sort of cut-off between yeah. a, an elite professional women's comp and just yeah. doing it, for, not for the sake of it, but you know what I'm trying to say. Just doing it for a hobby. Well, not, not I don't mean it in, in a derogatory way, I just mean yeah, that yeah, yeah, ultimately, yeah, Wakefield's women's team, Wakefield's got a women's team, fantastic, we sponsor one of the Wakefield ladies' teams as yeah. well. Great for participation, but if you're talking yeah, about yeah. your Georgia Roaches and whatever, you want to become professional athletes or presume they want to become professional yeah. athletes and sports I mean, you've got to try and fit there needs to be a bit of a plan doesn't it to see well what can we do to make these even if there's six elite women's teams how can we raise yeah. them to a level where they get enough money because I think I've seen it a few times on Twitter rugby league and Gary Evans has said this didn't he rugby league could use the women's game or, or you know that the women's game could be a great route for rugby league to get on TV and to get in the papers because you know what? It's we know that it's a good sport. If you get women playing it and it's a success, then then why not? Yeah, I agree. Um, that's it from us. The rugby league lunch hour this week uh, brought to you in partnership with our friends at Betfred. Um, please do leave your comments. This will be uh, available to watch on demand on our Facebook page and on YouTube. And Make on sure you check out all features on site this week. Jamie's so we, got a good one today. Good throwback Thursday. Today. Uh, yeah, good throwback Thursday today. Dennis Drummond uh, in BBC to oh, the old television. Program uh, superstars, yeah. Um, there's the a cheeky little reference to Gary Schofield as well in that as well. So oh, uh, leave a comment if you if you if you see what it is. But well, uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.